For all life's messy little moments, we've got the perfect solution, a bib without a tie. Super easy project, let's get started. So if you're like me, you're always dashing about and having a bib that you could even put in the car or something is really a great solution. Now, this is a great project and I just wanna say quickly thanks to Pat, a dear friend of ours that came up with this project idea and we have a wonderful uh, free pattern right here called Cut the Apron Strings because there is no tie. We just have these wonderful uh, poly beans up here in the shoulder parts. All you're gonna need is one yard of your favorite fabric. I chose this incredible fabric from Moda. It's a gradation, it's kind of pixelated and I love it. Look, this is what the other side looks like. So it was a full ombre print. Now, what I went ahead and did is I've already taken the yard and I've trimmed up the top and bottom. But before we do the next thing, we're gonna go ahead and turn it right sides together and get ready to mark for the neck hole. So it's still folded where the 45 was. And I'm gonna take a second and press, move those poly beans. We don't wanna spill those while we're working here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and press this nice. I'm lining up my outside edges. We're gonna do all of the work right off of the bolt, basically, right off of the yardage here. So I'm just hitting that seam over there. And now what I want you to do is look at the fabric. If your fabric has a direction to the print itself, maybe you've got some cute little pigs eating, you know, ice cream cones or something like that on there, make sure your direction is right sides up. We're gonna be approaching the top of our bib. We're gonna need a small ruler. We're gonna come over like it says here on the uh, instructions, four and a half inches from the edge. So I'm coming over four and a half, and I'm gonna just mark with my Sharpie. I'm gonna spin it, and I should probably flip this up so we can all read it, four and a half again, a little mark there. And then what I like to do myself is I'm gonna find the center, so I'm at 12 and a half inches between because I already trimmed off my selvage, so your numbers might be a little different. So let's just come over about six and a quarter, put a little center mark, and then I'm gonna drop down another eight inches here, this line, I'm gonna do a little bit of a dotted line on the back side of the fabric. This will all be cut away. Try not to mark through in any way that would bleed through your stuff. Now that that's been done this way, I want a really nice arc for that neck hole. So I'm gonna fold it one more time. And now I can see that's the starting point. There's the bottom. And for me, I just find it's easiest if I just take my pen out, doesn't have to be a perfect half circle, but I'm just gonna go ahead and make myself kind of a dotted line that's going to represent the neck hole. What I wanna point out though, this section right in here is where those beans are gonna be. So the more, if this is your skate ramp, the more vert we have in this area, the better it's gonna be. So a couple good inches in here to be the pocket for where the beans go. Once that has been drawn into place, I'm just gonna get my hand safe. I'm gonna use my rotary cutter with my fingers behind it. And I'm just gonna cut this arc natural along that dotted line, just like this. Okay, we'll set that aside. We won't need that again later. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here. We're gonna leave an opening so we can turn it back to right sides out later. So I'm gonna start about, oh, say six inches from the bottom edge. I have a quarter inch edge guide marker on, cotton threads. You could use poly because it's technically a garment if you want it to be. I'm gonna back stitch there and I'm gonna sew all the way to this front corner. And right off so I can pivot, line myself back up. And we're doing this edge first just to make life easy. The other is gonna be folded but I'll still stitch it. Now I'm coming up to that top corner and I can see that my fold shifted a little bit with my arc, but it's not gonna be a big deal at all because it's just a little bib that we're making. So I'm just kind of helping realign those edges, coming back over here. And as I sew through my arc, I am gonna keep my quarter inch seam allowance edge guide here in place. And I'm just gonna slowly let those corners come through. Just matching up those two edges of the fabric.
Now I've come to the halfway mark, so I'm just gonna double check, make sure everything's lined up nice as I finish it out. We're gonna go right across the top here. And I am gonna sew, as I said, down the folded side because that's gonna keep all the math symmetrical. It's not a requirement, but then this side would be technically a half inch larger than the other side if we don't. So I'm just gonna zip down to the bottom on this. Wasn't kidding when I said zip. Now I'm gonna come off that bottom edge again and prepare to go to the opening. Oop, let's get a little better start, there we go. I only need about four to six inches to fit my hands through. So that's about my hand's length there. I'm stopping, I am cutting, and all of the sewing construction is technically done. I want to go ahead and take a moment and dog ear these little corners up here so that we can make a nice crisp turnout. And we'll also do our bottom two corners. I told you I didn't get a very good start. <laughs> so all right, we'll be able to fix that as we fold it right sides back out. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna go right sides out. And I'm gonna stick my hand up in here. And I'm gonna work all the way up into those shoulder parts. Get our nice little crisp corners like we were working towards. You could trim that arc in the neck if you made a little steeper arc. I never find that it's necessary, but some folks that like to do garment sewing will do that as well in there. There's those nice crisp corners there and here. Now, we're gonna finish the entire project with top sewing. And we're gonna put the beans in one at a time up into the shoulder pieces. So what I'm really gonna do is do 90% of the top sewing now, then the beans. So we come back to the machine and I'm gonna make it look and start at this corner. So I'll uh, finish the top sewing to finish the hole. I need to leave that hole so I can get up inside to put the beans in place. So what I'm gonna do now, this is a fun little top stitching trick, is I'm just going to find a thread that I like to match. And as I begin down the seam, I come down about, oh, let's say six to 10 inches ahead of myself, roll that seam out and then I just let it roll flat through there using the edge of my foot now as my guide. And I'm gonna go do this all the way around the project, except for the bottom edge. And we'll be ready to get those beans in here in just a second. Let me jump into caffeinated mode for us all. Okay, as I promised, I stopped at the bottom corner, so I still need to top stitch this whole edge. It's open so we can fill the beans. Now, the next step for getting ready for our beans, though, is we need to mark our pockets. So I want to use a um, five inch ruler, and I'm going to flip this over to the darker side of the fabric just so I can see a little bit better. So I'm coming down here basically five inches parallel from that top edge, and I'm just going to make myself a line that I should be able to see over at the machine and line now. So we make our lines first, and then we get our beans ready. That's just right on that. I'm gonna have to make myself an arrow to see that one, <laughs> fun. Okay, now that that's there, I'm gonna use my poly pellets, and roughly about half to three quarters of a cup per shoulder. So one of the things I like to do is, uh oh getting away from me. Fill this about up like yay. like this. Now what I'm gonna do, I really want the beans to just get in the corner. So I'm kinda coming in here, holding my cup upright, and I'm gonna go all the way down into this corner, and I'm gonna pour them into just the one side at a time. Now that it's here, I'm using gravity 
in my favor. I am getting my edge guy completely out of the way right now. Should have done that earlier. And then what's going to happen is gravity, keeping off of the table, has gotten those beans all the way down and out of my way. I can see that beautiful chalk line there. And now I'm just going to go ahead and top stitch and lock it in. Back stitch there. Coming across, making sure there's no beans in my path. And I'm using now just the wonderful stripe in the fabric too. follow that chalk line. And I'm going to lock this down. Now, what I want to do is I want to cut this and I'm going to come and I'm going to do one exact row of stitching just like that, just next to it. So I'm now using the edge of my presser foot on the sewing. I'm no longer worried about the beans getting down there because they're already trapped up on that first. This is a security stitch, a safety stitch, a keep it all in place over time stitch. And I'm locking that down and I'm coming up here to do the other side. Put the same amount in both sides of the shoulders. Like I said, roughly half to three quarters of a cup of beans. That's more than I was on the other side. <laughs> of course, I'm using my iron filling cup here for the uh, scooper today, so I'm not obviously being too worried about accuracy. And of course, a couple of caffeine, Wiley Coyote, earthquake pills before every film shoot always makes me good and shaky anyways, right? There we go. Now, we need to get this back up in here. We've got to get it to this shoulder here. Keeping my cup upright. I'm working myself all the way over, all the way over, dumping it down. Get the cup out of the way. Get the cup out of the way. <laughs> I got the cup loss in the fabric out of the way. There it is. Still though, gravity, that's the thing I want you to see if nothing else. Gravity is working in our favor. There's also a neat trick where you can use a pen or a pencil or something along the edge down here to keep these beans back. Of course, I could have put some safety pins in the way, but this works really good. Sewing on that line, double checking to make sure I have no escaping beans. Lock it down. We're going to do that last security stitch. It was about a foot's width down. Okay, and now that construction is all set up. All we need to do now is come back down to our bottom seam and just finish this right back out. So I'm going to pick up where I left off on that corner, tie it back in, get it up and rolling. And I'm just taking a second, I'm pulling this bottom corner nice and taut. And what that just did is it flipped those seams in for me. Now I'm gonna pinch kind of halfway through that raw edge. And what we're doing now is we're sealing the entire bib closed. We're gonna go all the way across that. So nice and easy. Right over to our other bottom corner. Lock that down and all I have to do is trim those little pieces of thread and I've got yet another fantastic full length body bib there. And I know what you're thinking. He's gonna ask us today, what kind of fabric are we gonna use? And he wants us to tell us in the comments below, but that's not it. I wanna hear what is your biggest mess story. Of course, I wanna know what kind of fabric you're gonna use. You only need one yard's worth, but I wanna hear your greatest mess disaster and why you're making yourself your very own body bib right here at Man Sewing. Oh, hey, are you still in here? I thought you would've been checking out some of those other great videos. You know, we've got a link there, over there. And hey, don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you never miss a minute of the action. We'll catch you next time at Man Sewing.